Wow, so And let's remember our little Michael. Let's keep praying for Michael. He's here this morning and we're so happy he is and his daughter Ashley. So we're happy to have Ashley.
Okay, let's turn over to 143. And I know y'all probably know where we're going on these pages, but I'll just tell you anyway. So, 143. Somebody told me last Sunday, they said, we had that in the folder on my phone. I know it. It's a habit. It's a habit. Salvation reminds us 
that Jesus has forgiven us and protects you, sends the devil away. And then we have the belts of truth. With the, we get the belts of truth that helps us know right and wrong. Jesus is the truth that shields you from all the devil's, devil's lies. The sword of the spirit, and the sword of the spirit is our weapon, not to hurt people, but to fight off the sin. This spirit is God's word, the Bible, and it tells us how to live and speak in faith. Then we have the shield of faith. The shield of faith helps us fight off the attacks of the enemy and devil's tricks. It also reminds us that we have Jesus on our side. Shoes of readiness. The shoes of readiness help us to be brave and have peace and share in love with Jesus and others. And then we have the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness protects our, our hearts and reminds us that we belong to God. Each piece of armor helps us stand against the devil. How might each piece of armor help us throughout your day? Each piece of armor might help, which, like, as a belt of truth, what, how might that help you? Which, in the belt of truth, it says, we get the belt of truth that helps us to know right and wrong. Do any of y'all know how that might help? Yeah. It teaches us to know right and wrong. As it could say, is throughout the day, if someone tells us lies, like we should do something, we know the right part to do it, and we want to do the right part instead of the wrong. So, I have these oranges that represent the armor. And with in the water, the one with the full armor and stand firm, stand firm and say, well, this one forgot to put on its helmet of salvation. Well, it kind of goes down a little bit. forgot to put on the breastplate of righteousness. So he might sit down a little bit lower. Well, this one forgot to put on a lot of its armor that day, so it's not going to float as well as it did as the, and stayed firm as well as the others did with most of their armor on. something that is not true, we might believe it and we don't stand as firm as we did. When we remove all of our armor, now we can't really stand firm at all. Each day we need to think about putting our armor on so we can stand firm and be more closer to Jesus. Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the time we have together. I just thank you for waking us up all this morning and bringing us here to learn more about you. And I just pray to keep these younger ones safe throughout the week and help them learn more about you and where we are on our God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
if I holler out up here any time that doesn't go along or you see me jerk and spasm, don't think nothing of it. It's just my back. Just a nerve pinch that causes me to do something. So, hopefully that doesn't happen, but you never know. Because every time I got to get hay or something, it'll spasm. Look like I'm in the monitors. Because I'm getting a lot of hay. Today we're going to be looking at 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And in this section, as, as I titled the message, you know, be overcome to be an overcomer. Because in Christ, I'm just going to tell you right now, in Christ, it's not you will be, it's not you can be, it's a you are. And overcome. There is no sin that can hold you. There is no issue that can hold you. Nothing in your past, none of that stuff can be brought up against you. No failure that you have had while being a Christian can hold you because Christ is above it all. As I talked a little last week when I said that about the sin abounding, you know, and where Paul writes about that in Romans 6, where he says, you know, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And how the Roman church, you know, he put that fake, it's called an interlocutor, where it's like uh, having a discussion with somebody, and he's, he's putting the argument out that somebody might say. So it's kind of a potential argument that could be a real argument. That's the best way I can describe what that means. And, and they're like, so why don't we sin more so grace will abound more? And he says, by no means. But what that means, though, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more, is like I said last week, God's grace is bigger, greater than all our sins. There's nothing that can separate us from him as we read in there. And that's what we see here going through this because it says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. Very first verse. You're born of God. There's multiple things of how that works and what that means and multiple layers of it. But the main thing is, is just like when you were born the first time, you were something new. There would never been a you before. And it's the same thing here. When you're born of God, you're new again. So all that stuff in the past, all that stuff you'd committed all the way up to that point of your belief in Christ is gone. That's why I've used that whiteboard analogy. So many people want to take the whiteboard, you know, the dry erase boards, and they just wipe it clean and say, this is you with Christ. I say, no, that's not right. You throw that whiteboard away and a brand new one comes in. That's you in Christ. That's why you are an overcomer. The shame of the sin, the failures, the mess-ups, none of that matters. That's why the fact that we love one another that we went over with, over last week is so important. Is because we as people have a bad habit of holding each other down. Don't we? We have a tendency to bring up people's moral failures, people's past failures. I know I've had people look at me and say, but I know how you were. And that's what I tell them. That's not me anymore. That was me. Yeah, I lived that. And during the time of that, I had no shame in that. Now I look back on it and go, thank God. Because he delivered me from that. And that's why we're overcomers. We're not hung up in that. And that's why he goes on, everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. So... Any fellow Christian, this is not a you should. This is not a choice that we really have. It's not being asked. It's saying you love all who are born of God. And what's funny is I've been having a conversation with some guys that I'm involved with ministry-wise that are ones in like Chicago or, or Illinois, 
One's in North Car or South Carolina. We were having a messaging last night talking about it because there's been some pastors this last few years, in this last year, that have fell to immorality, that have been disqualified. And the, and the question was, is there any sin that fully disqualifies a man from ministry forever? And we're talking about that, and I don't believe there is because God's grace is greater than it all. There is restoration possible. But it led into the discussion of people who are on the sex offender list. Is God's grace greater than that too? I believe it is. But it's a deep subject and it's a lot to talk about. Because God's grace, if we're overcomers, as it goes on and talks about here, that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments, if somebody has been on that list and they're saved now, we got to love them. Because they've been redeemed and restored. As hard as that might be, we got to. And, and it's tough. we got to see the amazing grace of God shining above and beyond and outside of all these things. Because as we read through this text, when we keep His commandments, His commandments are not burdensome. It tells us that is not a burdensome commandment to love one another. Just like Christ told them in Matthew 11 when He said, all of you are weary and heavy laden, come to Me and I'll give you rest. For My yoke is easy and My burden light. That's the commandments of following God. When we're living in His grace, that's the key. Living in His grace. Not His shame. Right? He don't have shame. But not in our shame or made up shame. You all know the Nathaniel Hawthorne's book, The Scarlet Letter. We all grew up reading it. You had, I mean, I read it in like fifth grade. Great book. Kind of not exactly portraying the Puritans correctly, but kind of how they were too. But in that book, if you remember it correctly, Hester Prime had committed adultery and then got pregnant and had the kid. Well, they locked her up and then they made her stand with the scarlet A for adulterer, where she had to walk in her shame daily. That's not God. God takes all of that away and covers it with His grace to where you're not in shame. Shame is of the devil. Shame will hold you down. Shame will stop you from being who God says you are. That's all shame does. Shame will wreck you out. Shame will make you stop living long before you die. Shame will make you lock yourself away and hide and never step out to do anything. But verse 4 tells us, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verse 5, Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? God. If you believe that Jesus is the Savior, is the Son of God, is the one who died on that cross and rose again three days later for the forgiveness of your sins to give you everlasting life, you are an overcomer. There is no burden, no pain, no misery, no past shame, no past guilt, no past sin, no current sin that can hold you down if you look to Him completely. We'll hold ourselves back every time. Every single time we will hold ourselves back. We'll have fear. Much like a story I read of a soldier during World War II that he needed to go down to the front. He wouldn't do it. He kept going to Eisenhower and talking to him. Like, I, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go down there. I can't do it. Well, the next morning, Eisenhower said, meet me here. And he walked down to the banks of the river with him. And that soldier got brave. Because he went with him. 
You have that with Jesus Christ. You can have a fearless life and a fearless attitude and overcome all things that come before you because you don't have to go to Him and ask Him to go with you. You don't have to go to Him and plead with Him to give you strength because He's already with you. That's what Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 1.7. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. When we start living in shame, our self-control has disappeared because we have allowed something within to overcome rather than letting the Lord overcome that. We're not giving it to Him and living out what He has told us we are. See, Jesus is real and authentic and absolutely came to give us, as verse 11 says, this testimony is eternal life. That life is in His Son. And we have absolute proof that Christ came. That's what all these other verses tell us. Looking at 6 through 10, or 11, I mean, 6 through 9, it's He who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Spirit and the water and the blood, these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. But this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. That tells us there, and that's a confusing set of passages, is it not? By the water and the blood. And what, what would mean? Well, the water, there's many different views of this, and I take the water to be speaking towards that baptism. When he physically was baptized in front of lots of people, it's well known and seen. And the blood is his death at the cross. But also remember in the book of Gospel of John, where the spear went through his side and water and blood came out. That is another greater testimony because they didn't fully understand what that meant back then on how all that beating and all that trauma and all that abuse, and it's a big, big doctor word, you know, that none of us can say. But I think doctors just make up to confuse us. Big word on that, but basically somebody how that trauma and the heart beating, trying to pump blood for so much blood loss, started building that fluid around the heart and the lungs. So when it gets, he got speared, that happened. Proof that he was a living being. Because if y'all remember, we talked about how during this time frame, they were already starting to reject Jesus as a physical being and only a phantasm, a spiritual thing, because the flesh is so bad. God couldn't have come in the flesh. That's the beauty of it. And that's why we're overcomers and all of this stuff is because he did come and take on flesh. Sinful flesh that we have. He took on a body of death because our bodies are a body of death. That's what Paul tells us. We read it all throughout. You eat of the apple or the fruit. I said apple because everybody said apple. It's not an apple. It's just a fruit. You eat of the forbidden fruit, you will die. We are dying. And we're a body of death. Christ took that body to give us life. He came and suffered in all of these things so we can live. That's what He did. He did all of that for us. And do you think if He did that for you, He's going to abandon you in that moment when you're sitting there and you turn on your TV and all of a sudden it's a you know, perverted scene on there? Do you think he's going to abandon you to where you don't have the power to just turn the TV off? Do you think he's going to abandon you to where you're out there in the world and you're dealing with co-workers who are less than authentic, less than real, that are crooked? They're trying to draw you into a crooked scheme at work or in something else? Do you think he's just going to leave you without the ability to walk away from that or tell them no? Or if you have a boss who's pressuring you to cook the books, to do something so it'll help them but could fall back on you, or maybe you're working somewhere where they've made it so hard for you to speak about Christ, do you think he's not going to give you the strength to proclaim him in that position without fear? He hasn't left you. He did all of that for us 
and he's with us still to this day. You are an overcomer. This world can't take you down. This world can't break you. This world wants you to see yourself in the wrong way. See, Jesus tells us we're an overcomer. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't see yourself as an overcomer, you will be overcome. You will be overcome. You have to see yourself as what the Lord tells you you are. Just think about it. If you don't see yourself being who he says you are, you're going to start seeing yourself as who somebody else says you are. We all know what it's like to have people speaking negative things into your life. They tell you you're not smart enough. Maybe they tell you you're not able to do that. Maybe they're telling you that you're a failure. And you know what? If you're not believing who you truly are, you will start believing what they say you are. It will affect you. So you will be overcome by the way the world looks. If we don't see ourselves as who God says we are, if we're not overcome by who He says we are, if we're not overcome by what He has promised us, if we're not overcome by our love for Him and one another, we will be overcome by what Satan wants us to be overcome by. And the bottom line of this is, is through the power of the true and living person of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we can overcome all things. There's nothing that can take you down. Nothing. We all know the wonderful hymn, Power in the Blood. There is power in the blood. There is. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. If you're going to have victory over sin, it's the power of that blood. If you're going to be hung up in something, the power of the blood is going to pull you out of that. It's Christ and Christ alone. He is the one that will do it. You can overcome all obstacles before you, regardless what it is. I don't care what station of life you're in. If you're in Christ and you still struggle with lust, if you're still struggling with hate, or with mistrust, misplaced passions, bitterness, traps from the enemy, or any other sinful desire that has no power over you by the blood of Christ in your life. He has overcome it all. And guess what? You're in Him and He's in you. And you know what that means? It means you're no longer a slave to the sins of of this world. They're under your feet. They're, they're, they're past you. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is no temptation that overcomes you but that that is normal to man. But God provides the way out. God provides the way out. Yes, we're going to have these things. Yes, what? In Christ, following Him, being a believer of Christ does not mean you're never going to face an issue. It does not mean if you struggle with drugs, there's not going to be a draw to drugs. It does not mean if you struggle with alcohol, there's not going to be a draw to alcohol. It does not mean if you struggle with lust, there's not going to be a draw to lust. It does not mean, period, any of that. All of that is still going to be there. But God has provided the way out. Because you are an overcomer. You are not possibly one. You are one. Through Jesus Christ. You do not have to walk in the ways of the world. You do not have to feel this way. You do not have to be hung up wondering. You can know because you're born of God. You can know that nothing here can cause you stress or struggle. Ultimately. I read a post on Facebook from a guy that was talking about how he tries every day to live his life and you know for God and tries to focus on God and all that, but he feels like this world, it's a mud and muck and a bog that he's just slogging through every day. And he wanted to know how people 
deal with the same thing because he knows he's not alone. Right here is our solution. Know that you're an overcomer. Know that in Christ, that mud, that sludge, that bog, that struggle, that difficulty, that monetary struggle, that physical struggle, that illness, that ailment, that, that divorce, that horrible person who treats you like scum, all of that stuff means nothing when you have Jesus Christ as yours and he has you. Because guess what? Ultimately, this world's not our home. Ultimately, every person will stand before the Lord in judgment. Ultimately, we're going to be with Jesus Christ for eternity. That is how you overcome. That is how you do it. And when you feel the world closing in, and all things crumble. Say out loud, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer by faith in Jesus Christ. Say that out loud. Speak that truth into your heart because that is what you are. That is who you are. And that matters because when you believe you're an overcomer, when you believe it, I'm not saying just speak it just because I'm telling you to. I mean, believe that truth. When you believe that truth that Jesus Christ has said through his apostle John right here, when you believe that truth, you will be capable of so much more than you ever dreamed you could be. You'll be capable. You will be able to break those strongholds on your life. You will be able to smile regardless what is coming down. You will be able to walk with your head held high and your chest bowed out because you are in victory. As y'all have heard me say a million times from up here, we are not fighting in this life, from a place where we're trying to achieve victory, we are fighting from a place of victory. Amen. Remember that. Write that on a note card. Put it on your dashboard. Put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it wherever you spend a lot of time. Your computer. We are fighting from victory. Not to victory, but from victory. We are already victorious. We are not trying to be. We are. That's who we are in Christ. We are the victors. This world is lost. Satan has lost and he's still fighting and struggling trying to take things out even though he knows he's lost. We're in a battle. It's absolutely true. It's like a Many wars we've seen and heard of and read and studied where a place has been taken and the victory is basically sure, but people in that country or that nation are still fighting against a victorious empire. That's Satan. He's fighting against an empire that he cannot defeat. Cannot defeat it. But he's going to try to take you down. Because he knows he cannot win this war. But he does know he could still win a few battles here and there. And if he can ever get a Christian to trip, fall, falter, or stumble. Because they don't see themselves as an overcomer in Christ Jesus by Christ's power in them. He'll get you to trip. And he'll have a victory. Small v victory, but still a victory. So here's how we defeat them in all things. Because you have the power. Because you are born again believer of Jesus Christ. Nothing can hold you down. Nothing can hold you down. Except what you let hold you down.
this power here, this testimony of God, the spirit that he speaks of in verse 8, being the third, you have that spirit inside you. That is the testimony. You know it's true. You know who you are. You know where you stand. Don't let the lost world tell you any different. Don't let, let, let a Christian who's, who's got some bitterness issues that they haven't quite worked out tell you any different. Stand firm on Jesus Christ's word. And know that God's love for you is greater than anything. I'm telling you, people brought up a bunch of my past. Y'all know a little bit of it. We went over some of it last week. And I still didn't tell y'all everything I've done in my life. There's stuff that people can dra drag up. that I'm telling you, that could be very damaging if I ever ran for political office. <laughs> but the thing is, I know who I am in Christ. And I would say, yeah, that happened. You're right. I had that locker room talk, so to speak. And a lot of other things. But Jesus Christ says, that's God. Therefore, if any man is in Christ Jesus, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And before all that, it says, you're a new creation. You are new in Christ Jesus. So that old stuff, that's something that's dead and gone. That's the you that died. It's no longer living. Nobody can bring a charge against a dead person. And that's what we need to tell people. You're bringing up a charge against a dead person. That person no longer lives. They died X amount of years ago. You're talking to a new man, new woman, new creation in Christ Jesus who has overcome all of that because I'm in him and he's in me and he is a living, breathing Savior. And that you can depend on above anything. Let's go shine this light into this dark, dark, dark world. And let this bully world know that it's messing up. Messing with something that can beat its lips off of it. Because Jesus Christ is in victory. And let's stand with that. Because you, church family, are in victory. Remember that. Write it down. Don't forget it. Tattoo it on your arm. Have it constantly before you. You are in victory. And I know this church crowd, there's some out here struggling with that. If you are, do not leave before you speak with me or somebody here that will be in deep prayer for you. Because we are together. We are one body. I don't care if you're a pinky toe we're one lone hair follicle. You're part of the body. And we're in this together. Because everything has a part. And everything has a role. I promise. And we love you. Because we're together. And you know what? I was reading the deal. This just come to me. This is You get this for free. This is not a normal. I was reading the deal that was talking about you know, in marriage how... You know, your spouse, you need to have a different kind of love for them because they chose to love you. Your parents love you because, well, you're their kid. They got to. Your siblings love you because, well, they're your sibling. They got to. Aunts, uncles, cousins, all of that because you're family. But your spouse loves you because they chose you. Well, we get to choose to love one another. And that's a different, deep kind of love. Let's take that and hold on to that and love one another that way. When we do, well, Satan, he's going to hate every bit of it. But he can't do anything about it because we're following our Savior who tells us we're an overcomer and loving one another as he has told us.
And I want to let you know, if you need prayer, that's my love to you. And I will give it to you right back there at that door. Or you can drag me in my office. You don't have to drag me. I'll, walk, I'll carry you in there if I have to. Back or not. I just took a bunch of ibuprofen and I'm rolling. So, don't leave here if you're hurting. We want to pray for you. And if you need to pray, if you feel you need to pray, don't be afraid to come up and pray right up here. And if you need Jesus, you need this overcoming victory. Don't leave here before you get it. Because he died for you to live forever. Don't leave that out. Don't leave out the greatest, most amazing, most beautiful thing you can ever have in your life. Because you're too proud. Throw that pride in the dumpster and then light it on fire and walk away. One of the great songs by King and Country, for King and Country sings, burn the ships. That stuff needs to be left back there. Burn it. Burn that bridge. Don't recross it. It's over with. That is what Jesus Christ has done for you. So let's burn that stuff to the ground today. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today and we praise you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your just how you love us when we oof, when we have been so bad. But how? You showed your love to us while we were yet sinners. You died for us, Jesus. And how there is nothing that can bring a charge against us because we're yours. There is nothing that can separate us. There is nothing that can remove that. There is nothing that can break what you have done. And Lord, I pray that each person here will walk out this door today knowing that in their hearts that they're yours and they're an overcomer and there is nothing that can stop that. That your love is far greater than anything else. And that there is that assurance in you. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for this amazing love and gift you have given us. And I pray, Lord, if there is anyone here who has not, that needs it, that today is the day that they won't leave here without knowing Christ, knowing you, Jesus, as their Savior. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed, wonderful week.